at least they refer to them. So we're just well, talking two later now. beds on five and four. Thanks. Wow. Right. I think the I think what you need to do is uh, I mean are there ongoing ward rounds still? Right. I would I think I think Karen and you need you need to target those ward rounds to say, look, it's Monday night, we're gonna be faced with no capacity if we do not discharge. That would mean we'd be really struggling. What are you trying to say that I'll be here all night? In the words of Lionel Richie, it could be all night long. <laughs> I would say it's acceptable levels at the moment. Um, we don't have a capacity in the hospital. You don't have any capacity? Okay. That's no. unacceptable. Uh, how things are at the moment, that is considered acceptable. We have, uh, we have a, not a long queue in the corridor. The trolley you see there is considered acceptable at the moment. Not for me. I don't think corridor medicine should be acceptable in any developed country. Yeah. I woke up and had chest pain. Yeah. And then they got a bit bad, so I pressed my button and I gave a emergency. And uh, then I ran up in here. Right. So <laughs> I'm going to stop overnight. We arrived here about 7.20 this morning. And um, we've had fantastic care all morning, uh, doctors, nurses, blood tests. And uh, she's waiting now to be admitted to uh, clinical dependency units, uh, but we're just waiting for the bed now. Right, okay. So uh, obviously we've ended up in the corridor, and uh, we don't know how long we'll be here now. How do you feel about that? Um, well, it's a bit, bit alarming that um, you, you know you're sort of in the, in the corridor where the common foot affair and uh, everything going on, which isn't good for you know someone who's uh, 90 this year. And how are you feeling now? Are you uh, yeah, a bit sore across my chest, but I'm fine. Okay. Have a quick look at that patient down there. She Think feels a bit wheezy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she has literally just been assessed within the last five minutes. Okay, I'll let you discuss that between you. I'm just going to. I appreciate that. I will let my nurse in charge know. Um, her oxygen saturations are technically within normal limits at the moment. I just had a breathing. Yeah. And how long have you been waiting in the corridor for? Oh, just five, five minutes. Okay. Hey. Five minutes. You've just been waiting here for five minutes. Okay. And what, what have you been told? She won't be long. The patient's complaining of shortness of breath. Oh, hi, John. Uh, my colleague recently assessed her, and um, her oxygen saturations are technically within normal limits for somebody with her condition. Um, she's saying she feels still short of breath and quite wheezy, um, which she might do, but at the moment, because her oxygen saturations are normal, I can't do anything else. Um, I can't provide her medication on the corridor, uh, especially because she's sat in a wheelchair, doesn't have an oxygen tank on it. So, for the time being, she'll just have to wait until she's assessed again by a doctor. Are you two clear why we're here today? We've talked to you about equipment that you need at home and my understanding is clearing a space at home is the first thing that needs to happen. Yeah, is I'm that right? To, yeah, I'm trying to move um, or oh, dismantle a table and chairs which is for six people. Um, the doctors have said that you're medically fit to not be here. They, they reckon that you're well enough to be at home. When we spoke last week, you said that you um, were going to speak to your neighbour about clearing the space. They haven't been in. They haven't been there. When I've been there, they haven't been. The difficulty uh, we have um, here is that we're using a, an acute hospital bed okay and we actually need to be making sure that the discharge is actually moved on um, as quickly as we possibly can. I'm sure that you're probably aware and seen um, you know in, in the national news and the media um, hospitals are at breaking point we are um, the beds are a, a very precious resource and we have to be big we, we have to be seen to be making sure that we are, um, you know, moving people along. It seems there's been quite a long delay of a good two weeks now. Um, so the only alternative that I can see uh, would be making contact with Sandor CCG uh, that we identify uh, a nursing home that we can use as an alternative place for you to wait. I've seen nursing homes. My mum died in nursing home. <laughs> 
there's no easy there's no easy answer there to isn't it. There is an easy no. Uh, no. answer to it. Um, Thank you for making the time for meeting with us. Okay. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. You're Thank welcome. You. The hospital had got to the point that we were struggling to find beds for people coming in through the doors. Um, so it was very much about um, looking at um, all ways that were needed to make sure that um, beds were vacated and made available um, so that we could ease the pressure that clearly the hospital were going through. Got a brain tumour. I kept on collapsing the town. And kept on collapsing and we kept on having to pick you up didn't we and, and from there it got worse yeah. he was admitted by the hospital because he collapsed mm. while he was here he wants to go i want to go home i'm fed up of being here but you were you bored here weren't you and you said it's all right it's all right it's all right I told you I'm going to be two months to live. That's the problem. They've said <laughs> it can't be corrected and it only got two months to live. We've been told two months. It it could go longer. Could. We don't, it could. We don't know. We don't that's, know. That's sort of why you want to go home, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so at least you can go home and just chill out in front of the telly. With me, Sean? In, in Andy's case, um, I think Yvonne um, was possibly struggling with his diagnosis. He has deteriorated quite quickly um, over a very short period of time. My understanding is that they do, they do have a 10-year-old son also living at home. Um, and clearly Yvonne was struggling with um, the, the vast change in Andy. You're having a laugh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to be right. this place. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, look, who in, there, who in here is waiting for a medical bed so yeah. I can pull them from CDU? My role is uh, to be to take overall um, management of the hospital, maintain safety of all the patients. Oh, just give me a list. Making well, oh, sure no, that no, A&E flows no, correctly and empty, that patients patient. don't bottleneck in A&E and sit there for hours waiting for beds got no capacity so I'm moving patients out of the cubicles to make space. Two seconds, let me phone 514 and find out what's going on with this stroke bed because when this hospital was built it was based on um, 150 people attending A&E, we're around about that in a 24 hour period. Most days we're seeing 350, sometimes 400 people so you know the maths don't work out, do they? We're actually in trust position. We're still in a position of minus 73 beds at the moment. There's seven, currently 17 people waiting in A&E <coughs> for a medical bed. Uh, there's one for renal. That's the one in recess that's going to 301. Okay. Do you know about that one? I mean, this is way off at the moment. But that's not an acceptable position for us to be in at, at this time. Well, right now we're really struggling in the middle of winter with a lot of delayed transfers of care. Um, they're taking 105 beds, I think it is today. Um, yeah, 105 beds. These, these are patients that should be looked after in a care home. Yeah, or, or in some cases in their own home with a package of care uh, and we're waiting for social workers who are very stretched at the moment uh, to come and, and put uh, all the arrangements in place for those patients. This ward that we're on was set up seven years ago and is for people who are what we call delayed transfers of care. So this is people who are trapped in the hospital because there isn't sufficient care in the community. Hello. Hello Beryl. The situation at the moment is the worst I've seen it since I qualified and started working as a doctor 17 years ago. The real difference now is that I'm unable to see that there is any light at the end of the tunnel. And you've been in hospital, it's been a long time on and off, hasn't it, Beryl, now? Because you had a long... You were in and then you were home for about 24 hours, weren't you? And then you then you came back in. When she was taken ill, they yeah. brought her here to yeah. the QA. But she's quite... I don't think there's anything wrong at the moment. She's quite well. So though you weren't ill when you came in, it was the yes. the day yes. after the, the sort yeah, of trauma yeah. of being at home and, and things it's not just, working. Uh, and... Pain in my knee now, uh, yeah. rheumatism. Mm. Pain in my knee, we shall go. I'll see what I'll see if there's something more we can do about it. Yeah. 
Beryl and Les, who are a couple who have been married for over 65 years, who are currently separated because there is no capacity within the social care system to provide a bed where Beryl can be looked after nearer her home, or even to provide a level of support at home that would enable Beryl to keep living in her own house with her husband. It will be nice to know actually what what is intended, you know. What's, what, what's been happening last while? Well, at the moment, you're not sure whether there will be a, a, a nice place for Beryl to go to. You know, because you, you, you tried home, didn't you, and, and it yeah. didn't work, and yeah. that's how you ended up back here, yeah. and that's why you've been, been looking yeah. at care homes. I wish I could care for her, so I really do. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. Hello. Yeah. Is it Violet? Yeah. Hi, my name's Claire. I'm one of the site managers here. Yeah. Um, we've got you a bed on 304, which is um, the doctors here want you to go up to the specialist ward on 304. Oh. So tonight we'll be moving you up there. That's all right. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, I'm so cold. I know someone else has Mine's just said that. Violet was admitted into a &E with <laughs> chest pain and, a, and symptoms that did look like a stroke. Yeah. So though the the stroke symptoms have resolved, but she has been left with some cardiology symptoms, and that's why um, the medics down here want her to have a specialist 304 bed, which is cardiology, and we've managed to achieve that for tonight. I've been looked after fine. Okay. I'm waiting to go to a, a nice ward now. Because when I found you earlier, you were in the corridor, so this yes. is a bit better. Yes, and they're moving me again now to a distant ward, so, yeah. but, so um, it'll be nice. How many people have we got in the corridor? At the minute we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six in the corridor and two en route, so we will be heading up to eight. Um, I've been in a and &E about three years now and when I first started here there was nobody on the corridor at all um, and we were just, everyone had been moved into the cubicle straight away but it's completely different now. Right. And what, what do you think about that? It's a shame. It's heartbreaking, it's just heartbreaking. absolutely heartbreaking um, because you want to get them into an assessment area and get them assessed quickly. Uh, no one here would want to see people waiting in, on trolleys, but the reality is you can't get them into an assessment area quick enough because you, at the moment we haven't got the beds to put the people that are waiting for beds. Um, and it has changed because we, we didn't have this. It's a reflection on the, the, the volume of, um, of people that arrive in. Is this our medical alert then, obviously? 